Have you ever wondered what is E and where it comes from? Perhaps you've been exposed to this letter in math where you see the function f of x is equal to e to the x or maybe you've seen it when dealing with logarithms. For instance, let's say if we have log 5. If you don't see a base, the base is always base 10. But what about natural logs? Let's say ln5. The base of a natural log is e. So this is the same as log base e of 5. So e is found in many areas of math, but what is e? e is a number. e is equal to 2.718281828. And there's some other numbers after that. But that's what it is. But let's talk about where it comes from and how we can calculate that number. So one way in which we can get this number is through this formula, the compound interest formula, where A is the future amount, P is the principal or the original investment, times 1 plus the interest rate received, divided by N, raised to the n t. n is the number of times that you are paid interest in a year, and t is the number of years. So let's say that you invest a dollar for one year. So t is going to be equal to 1. And we're going to say that the interest rate is 100%. 100% as a decimal is just 1. So if you are paid once in this year, how much money will you have at the end? Well, your $1 investment will grow to $2 at 100% interest. But what about this is when n is 1 because you're paid once a year. What if you're paid 100% but semi-annually? That is two times in a year. So n would be 2. In this case, plugging everything into this formula, you'll have p is 1 r is 1, n is 2, and t is going to be 1. So it's just going to be 1 plus 1 half raised to the second power. So after the end of the year, you're going to have $2.25. Now, instead of being paid the 100% interest twice a year, what if it was broken up into four times a year? Let's say if you receive quarterly payments. In this case, n would be 4. So it's going to be 1 plus 1 over 4 raised to the 4th power. At the end of the year, you'll have $2.44. Now, what about if it's compounded monthly? Let's say if you receive 12 interest payments in one year. So it's going to be 1 plus 1 over 12 raised to the 12th power, which is $2.61. And then let's say if the interest was paid out daily, that is if n is 365, this is going to be 1 plus 1 over 365 raised to the 365. you'll get $2.71. Now, it turns out that as n approaches infinity, that is, if it's compounding continuously, you'll get e, which is 2.718, 2.8, and so forth. And you could test it out. If you plug in a very large number for n, you're going to get e. So for instance, if you plug in 1 plus 1 over, let's say n is a million, or 1 times 10 to the 6. If you type this into your calculator, you're going to get 2.718280469. Which is approximately e. So thus we could say that the limit 
as n goes to infinity of the expression 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n is e. So that's where the number e comes from. At least that's one way in which you can calculate it. There are some other mathematical expressions that will give us the value of e. Here's another one. The limit as n goes to 0 of 1 plus n raised to the 1 over n is also e. So if we were to make a table of values, you can test this out. If n is 1, you're going to get 2. Now, if n is 0.1, you'll get this number, 2.59374246. If n is 0 0.01, you'll get 2.7048. And then if you put 0 0.001, this will be 2.7169. 24. 0 0.0001 or 1 times 10 to the minus 4. It'll give you a number that's close to E, 2.718.14592. And then if you use 1 to the, times 10 to the minus 6, you'll get a number that's very close to E. So as you can see, for this particular expression, as n gets very, very small, as it gets closer and closer to 0, the expression 1 plus n raised to the 1 over n approaches e, as we can see here in this table. So that's another formula that can help you to calculate the value of e. But we're not quite done yet, because there is another way in which you can get the value of e. It turns out that if you take the sum of 1 over n factorial from n equals 0 to infinity, this will also give you e. So 0 factorial, if we have 1 plus, I mean 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, we're not going to add all of it, but we're just going to get a few numbers to see how close this gets to e. Let's stop at 1 over a factorial. 0 factorial is 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. 1 factorial is also 1. 2 factorial is 2, so we get 1 half. 3 factorial, that's 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So this is going to be 1 over 6. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. 5 factorial, just multiply 24 by 5, and that'll give you 120. 6 factorial, just multiply 120 by 6, you get 720. 7 factorial, multiply 720 by 7, you should get 5040. And 8 factorial, multiply 5040 by 8, and you'll get 40,320. Now, go ahead and plug these numbers into your calculator and see what value you get. So this is equal to 2.718.2787, which is approximately e. Now granted, if you keep adding more numbers, like, one, like plus 1 over 9 factorial plus 1 over 10 factorial, it's going to get closer and closer to e. But as you go to infinity, you'll get the value of e. Now, there are also some other applications of E, which is also known as Euler's number. For instance, consider the graph y equals e to the x, which looks like this. The derivative of e to the x is also e to the x. So what this means is that if you take the slope at any point of this function, 
the slope of the tangent line is going to equal the y value at that point. So y is going to equal m at some value of x. So that's one interesting property of e, or e to the x. Another one has to do with the area. It turns out that the area is also equal to the y value of the graph. So let's say, let me draw another picture. So let's say we want to find the area all the way from the left to some value x. The area under the curve can be calculated by taking the definite integral of f of x from a to b. In this case, since we're starting all the way from the left, a would be negative infinity. So the area will be the integral from negative infinity to x of e to the x dx. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now evaluated from a to b, this is going to be e to the x minus e to the negative infinity. e to the negative infinity is basically e to, it's 0, or 1 over e to the infinity. So you just get e to the x. And since y is equal to e to the x, thus we could say that y is equal to the area. So the height of the graph at some value of x is equal to the area under the curve from negative infinity to x for this particular function. So that's basically it. So now you know what the value of e is, how to calculate it, and some applications associated with the number e. Thanks for watching.